It's June 30th, 1997, and this is episode 216 of WWF Monday Night Raw. Commentary for the night is Vince McMahon, JR, and Jerry the King Lawler. Raw opens with a video package showing the history of The Undertaker and Paul Bearer, as tonight Bearer has vowed that he will reveal to the world The Undertaker's dark secret. Moving to the opening match of Raw, Ken Shamrock is taking on Hunter Hearst Helmsley with China. Shamrock and Helmsley have a huge... Locking up a nice take down there. Bob and Jerry Basic take it up on his feet. A lot. Yeah. Hunter Hurst. And he's not about to let him out of that corner. As Hunter Hurst Helmsley goes to work on Shamrock. Well, that was some discretionary officiating. I don't know if I agree with it or not. But that official... matches JR mentioned and Hunter Hurst Helmsley. You can name Snap Bear. Let's see what he, he drives the knee right across the foot. Show up in a city like this. Oh! The Scott for second Des Moines. Wait a minute. Try to try it. During the match, we see Mankind heading down the ramp. Mankind, Sunday for Mankind. From behind. Hunter is distracted by Mankind, allowing Ken Shamrock to hit the belly-to-belly -belly slam for the victory. Next, we're given an update on Ahmed Johnson. We're told that Ahmed Johnson tore ligaments in his right knee and had surgery over the weekend. Ahmed gives a promo from his hospital bed. But honestly, I had a hard time understanding what he was saying here. But I did get that he was coming for The Undertaker when he's recovered. Next, we cut backstage with Michael Cole, standing by with the Legion of Doom. Hawk and Animal cut a promo on their upcoming match against the Nation of Domination. Next is a semi-final match to determine a number one contender for the WWF Tag Team titles. The Legion of Doom, Hawk and Animal are taking on the Nation of Domination, Farouk and D'Lo Brown with Karma Mustafa. Right then, right last week. Well, and we are now, ladies, getting set in Farouk. Oh, oh with a slap. Turn from Chicago, the Legion of Doom. And oh, nice suplex. During the match, the Godwins head out onto the stage. The Godwins are currently feuding with the LOD. Set it. Oh. Down for the next record. I'm sure watching at home tonight in Houston. After the devastation device, Henry Godwin hits Hawk in the back of the head with a slot bucket. And Farouk would pin Hawk for the victory here. After the match, Farouk calls Vince McMahon into the ring. Farouk says that he's heard since Ahmed Johnson got injured that Vader has become the number one contender for the WWF title. Farouk asks why Karma, or D'Lo, or himself aren't the number one contenders, and says he knows why, and that the reason that Vader was chose is because of the color of his skin. Vince then brings up Crush. Farouk says that Crush and the DOA and nothing but disciples of The Undertaker. Farouk is then interrupted by Savio Vega. Vega says that last week Farouk and the nation got the better of him because he was by himself and says that tonight he's here to get revenge on Farouk and the nation. Savio then calls out his own men. Look at this! Here, here comes, here comes. Savio and his men hit the ring and brawl with the nation. Of the nation of domination! Vega. Went back to Puerto Rico, it looks like. You can hold Savio. As the fight is broken up, the Disciples of Apocalypse head out. And this is not gonna be no fight rally! They surround the ring before jumping in, and all three groups would brawl. The brawl is broken up by police and referees heading into the commercial break. After the break, we head backstage once again to Michael Cole. Cole is interrupted by Savio Vega. Vega introduces us to his new factoring, which he calls Los Bariquas. Next is a light heavyweight match. Scott Putsky is taking on Brian Christopher. All you have to do is say yes or no. The well, greatest in the world, the yeah. great Sasuke, will beat McMahon because he has grown up watching me wrestle. That's right, in the US. During the match, Lola would dodge questions from McMahon and JR about Brian Christopher being his son. Was it? Oh, oh. Rock kick in the back of the head. Oh, dummy thinks his kid's doing good right now. Scott Putsky. <laughs> After the diving splash, Lola interferes in the match. Lola would be knocked off the apron, but would interfere once again, allowing Brian Christopher to get the victory. After the match, Christopher and Lola would attack Putsky. Now moving backstage, The Undertaker addresses the fans, telling us that tonight Paul Bearer is going to tell a slanted version of a night that changed his life forever. And he asks the fans, 
but let him have his chance to tell his side of the story. Moving to the next match, Mankind is taking on Brian Pillman. Before the match, Mankind delivers a gift to JR, a packaged mandible claw as a peace offering after Mankind attacked JR several weeks ago. Right into the elbow. But it's a big thing for him to do. Oh! The old Steve Austin standing by. During the match, we head backstage with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin says he doesn't care about mankind and thinks that he sucks, but says that he also doesn't care about Shawn Michaels. But no one will take the WWF tag team titles away from him. Back on the ramp, ladies and gentlemen. China. During the match, China and Hunter Hearst Helmsley head out onto the stage. What's going to happen? The only way to handle Pillman is to beat him. This match is, I still wonder, what is the secret? Oh, no, Pillman's bad leg! Oh, bad leg! I don't know! Oh. Tag this Sunday on pay-per-view. And look at that. Mankind locks in the mandible claw and Helmsley runs down. Now Hunter, Hunter side with Hunter Hearst tag. And Hunter Hearst tag will pop. But Pillman just took his boot off and hit Mankind China. Distracted with Helmsley here, Mankind will get counted out, with the victory going to Brian Pillman. After the match, we head backstage to Paul Bearer. Bearer says that he's about to go to the ring and announce The Undertaker's dark secret, saying that this is the beginning of The Undertaker's end. As Raw moves into its second hour, Paul Bearer makes his way to the ring. Bearer is wrestled to the ground here by a fan. I'm not sure if this is real or not. In the ring, Bearer says that we're going to have to go back 20 years. Bearer describes working as an apprentice mortician, working for The Undertaker's father. After a long story, he then tells us that along with The Undertaker's parents, he had a little brother called Cain, and that they all died in a house fire, which was caused by The Undertaker when he was just a boy. Bearer would then begin calling The Undertaker a murderer. We then head to a commercial break. Next is a semi-final match to determine the number one contenders for the WWF Tag Team titles. The Headbangers are taking on Owen Hart and the British Bulldog. The Tag Team Champions, they saw the Godwins, the nation advanced to do. Oh, they fight their way right back in here, who knows? The first tonight, Hello. Owen Cross, North America. Oh, great flap to the Headbanger, oh. or will it be the Hart Foundation? Well, it certainly doesn't deserve to Back quickly from behind. Owen Hart, the legal man. Champion, oh, the yeah. ball, the European champion. The schedule to call our studio. And we were scheduled. He certainly seems to be growing here in the W. Yes, I am. Up here in Calgary. During the match, Bret Hart calls in to hype up the Canadian Stampede pay-per-view this Sunday. And Cal with fire, and they know that. And uh, everybody understands that. The old Bret Hart. Is that, in fact, the case or what? Uh, you might oh. see the old, the old Bret What he wants. Thank you very much. Oh. Owen Hart wins the match with a roll-up. Part of Bulldog and Owen, and it looks like it, it's, it's not all finished. But after the match, Jim Cornette is on the ramp. Cornette says that he's got a new tag team, saying they didn't make it in time for the tournament, but they're here now. The two men head to the ring and brawl with Owen, Bulldog, and the Headbangers. A powerhouse if they're everywhere. Off the rope to the oh. Double clothesline. Give me the dip. The headbangers are going to get the cornet. Hold it. I may have to hit. Pegging off is these. Ah! Oh! Doing! Ah! Oh! Oh! A moonsault! Wherever they are, it just squats the headbangers. After a commercial break, we head backstage with The Undertaker. The Undertaker says that what Bearer said earlier is true, saying that his mother, his father, and his little brother Kane burnt to death in the funeral home. The Undertaker then tells that it was not him that lit the fire, but Kane. Kane lit the fire in the funeral home, and he feels responsible for not being there to stop Kane. Moving now to the next match, 
Vader with Paul Bearer is taking on Rockabilly with the Honky Tonk Man. Rockabilly starts the match with a guitar shot to Vader. And Vader didn't even go down! Here comes the Undertaker! The Undertaker runs in and attacks Vader before turning his attention to Paul Bearer. The Undertaker attacks Bearer and tells Bearer to tell the truth. Tell the world the truth. Bearer says that Kane told him. It's now time for tonight's main event. Jim the Anvil Nightheart is taking on Stone Cold Steve Austin. Look out! The Anvil attacking Stone Cold Steve Austin! During the match we head backstage where Ken Shamrock is watching along. For the ride, reversal, coming out of the buckle! Oh, oh, uh, it won't be like some Mike Tyson fight. Won't be eight oh. minutes long, folks. Cold Steve Austin, Austin, oh. right into it. Austin with a new fast press, and now that's the right hands, right here tonight. Out uh -oh. to the parking lot, and here we go. What's this? What's he doing? Uh oh, Butler simply on Raw. And yes, Stone Cold will reach for the tough customer. Marrying into the Hart family. Uh oh. Jim the Anvil. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Strips up the Anvil. Oh, right on the steel. After a commercial break, we're showing that Ken Shamrock has been attacked by Bret Hart. Bret Hart is supposed to be in Canada right now. Call our studio, ladies and gentlemen. And Stone Cold's going to go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, he's not. That right. Austin scooped up. No, nobody hurt. Austin wearing Jim. After his attack on Shemrock, Brett runs in and attacks Stone Cold. And Stone Cold and Jim the Anvil. Look at Whoa! That's a figure four. No heart. Good. Austin's leg. Mankind then runs in to help Austin, and Mankind locks in the mandible claw on Bret Hart, and the Hart Foundation will try and break Mankind off Bret, as Raw ends. Before we finish, please comment on your favourite part of the show. Mine was when Bearer told The Undertaker that Kane was alive. What a moment. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, if not a thumbs down, and I'll see you on the next one.